Lisa from Al Maghrib Institute, and I'm super excited uh, for today's live webinar, inshallah, with our special guest. I was going to say secret, but I put his name in the title, so it's not a secret, really. Um, please say your salams in the chat as you're joining us, and let us know which corner of the globe you're coming in from, uh, inshallah, as we get ready, as we warm up for today's session. I can't wait to begin with you guys. I see a few of you have joined us. Assalamu alaikum. Where are you coming in from? Let us know in the chat. Um, and please do say your salams to everybody else as well as we warm up uh, for today's webinar. Of course, I'm being joined by the founder of Noor Kids, Brother Amin Asir is joining us. And alhamdulillah, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but some of you may be already, alhamdulillah. But Amal Grib has had the honor of partnering with Noor Kids uh, and, and creating a baby together called uh, Ilm Spring, which is one of the coolest things that we've done in the past few years. Monkey Boo, I see. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Welcome to our session today. Where are you coming in from? And the many of you who are joining us, uh, Jazakallah Khair, Niz Nizamuddin. Apologies if I butchered your name. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Where are you coming in from? Let us know. Muhammad Sadiq as well. Jazakallah Khair for being here. Inshallah, we're starting in just a minute uh, as I bring on Brother Amin. But I want to get you guys uh, ready to go, inshallah. Brother Amin is high energy. He's going to take off running, inshallah. So I don't want to, I want to make sure you guys are ready to meet that. I want to make sure that you guys are hydrated, that you're excited, and that you're, of course, sharing this link to this live session in your chats, on WhatsApp, on Telegram, on Facebook Messenger, on Discord, whatever you guys are using these days. Uh, please do share uh, the khair, inshallah. Monkey Boo's coming in from Glasgow. Glasgow? Glasgow? Let me know how to pronounce that. Ahmed, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Canton, Michigan in the house uh, with Ahmed. Jazakallah khair for being here today. Uh, inshallah, let's get this shared. Let's get this going uh, before we jump in. For those of you who, the two of you maybe here who are not familiar uh, with Brother Amin, alhamdulillah, he is the founder and the executive director of Noor Kids, uh, which is a Harvard-supported educational technology firm that seeks to build character meaning, children, character meaning among children. It's launched in 2012, so it's been around for 10 years. They're celebrating their anniversary. Uh, and as many of you know, Al Maghrib, mashallah, is celebrating our 20-year anniversary. So it's amazing that we've met at this conjunction, alhamdulillah. Newer Kids has titles in over 250,000 homes across 25 countries, mashallah. And Brother Amin is the one who started it all. Jazakallah khair for joining us, Brother Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's an honor to have you. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. So good to hear from you and so good to see you, Sister Hafsa. How are you doing on this wonderful Thursday evening? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I'm doing great. I'm really excited to have you on. Um, I'm excited for us to jump into the third leg of the Elm Spring journey together. Um, but Brother Amin, I know some people are super familiar with what we're talking about. Some people have no clue. They've been living under a rock. They haven't been checking their emails. Um, so what is Elm Spring? What is it and why was it created? So look, um, Sister Hafsa just mentioned a little bit about Noor Kids and a little bit about Al Maghrib Institute. I want to tell you about Noor Kids first. We started 10 years ago to solve a very specific problem. How do we make sure that when Muslim youth are growing up in North America and across the world, build a love for their faith. Well, we did a bunch of research and what we discovered is those first nine years matter a whole lot. If we can plant the seeds of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at a young age, then as those children get older, inshallah, it will bear good fruit. Inshallah, we will be successful. So we ended up doing a lot of research and we created this wonderful character building program for children ages four to nine. Al Maghrib Institute discovered an opportunity specifically related to adults. That is, for those of us who have not, for example, invested our lives into learning religion through going to the seminary, how might we learn about our faith in a methodical and a, uh, a, a, with a level of excellence? Hence why they created al Maghrib Institute. But any parent who has a child in middle school will know that between children and adults, there is young adults. 
there's this period of middle school where, you know, I mean, you talk about establishing roots and trees, but like middle school can be a hurricane, a hurricane somewhere between TikTok and between, um, uh, between Snapchat and between figuring out what clothes we're wearing to figuring out what's cool on Twitch, there is a real set of challenges that many of our 9 to 14-year-old Muslim children deal with. So how might we inspire these 9 to 14-year-olds to build a genuine, loving connection with their faith? And not only a genuine and loving connection with their faith, but also relationships, a feeling like they're part of a community of other people who look like them and who talk like them and love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like them. And through that, Ilm Spring was born. So about two years ago, alhamdulillah, I had the good fortune of working with uh, Brother Noor, who's the um, executive director of Al Maghrib Institute. And um, we began thinking, yes, there is a problem to be solved, but what does this actually look like? How can we actually create content that nine to 14 year olds, how can we create a course? How can we create work that nine to 14 year olds will genuinely, seriously, out of their own free will, want to be a part of? Because here's the thing, Hafsa. The goal here isn't to create something where we have to like twist our kids like arms. Like, oh, you know, like you have to go to this class. Oh, no, no, no. You have to. You have to participate. No, we want to create something where genuinely youth out of their own accord want to be a part of it. And so we had to do a lot of research in order to figure out how we would teach these classes. That's awesome, mashallah. SubhanAllah, so that's that, that's what I love about newer kids and Amalgar partnering is that there is this gap in the middle uh, that both of us have perfected our styles of teaching and we've, per we've got such passionate, excited audiences. Now, how do we make that learning just as exciting for kids who are in such an important transitional part of their lives? Nine to 14 is so, so crucial. There's so much that happens, especially nowadays with the, the TikTok generation and all the confusing messaging that there is out there. How do we replace that with positive, mes positive messaging? So I'm really glad that we have that joint mission, <coughs> alhamdulillah. Now, I do want to ask, what does what makes Ilm Spring unique compared to all the other content that there is out there for this group of people? What is it that stands out? Well, I'm glad you asked, Sister Hafsa. It is almost as if I planted that question, uh, which I, you know, did not, but I kind <laughs> of alluded to it in, 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 in the last thing. I said, oh, you know, we came up with this secret sauce. Let me give you a little bit of an insight into our secret sauce. Dun, dun, dun. No, I'm kidding, but kind of. Um, by the way, if you do have any questions on the chat, write down, you know, your questions for us and we'll be uh, we'll be very happy to answer them. And I know on the bottom it says starting soon. Let us know where you're coming from. Uh, we're starting right now. We've already started, but do let us know where you're coming from. So when we approach Islamic education, we're, we're not approaching it in a willy nilly way we are approaching it with actually a pretty significant level of sophistication from two different sources. There are secular sources, and then there are scholarly sources. Let me first tell you about the secular sources. When we thought about being able to create pedagogy, pedagogy means how we teach, really being thoughtful about how do we teach in a way to connect to nine to 14 year olds, what we discovered is that there are key elements that are absolutely essential that if we include, we'll be able to make our courses connect with this age group, connect like butter. What do I mean? Number one, curiosity. Now, according to educational theorists, um, the curiosity is to learning what smelling delicious food is to eating. What do I mean? You know that feeling of going home and 
smelling some delicious food and beginning to salivate and your yourself getting ready to eat in a similar way when our curiosity is peaked our brain actually becomes ready to learn and in fact um, according to some scientists they believe that our brain almost becomes like a vacuum cleaner it becomes a vortex it begins to suck up any piece of information that it begins to learn when curiosity is peaked so every single lesson that we teach within ilmspring First, the first most essential part of every one of our lesson plans is all focused on curiosity and figuring out how can we make sure that these young adults are salivating, like waiting for every piece of information uh, because they're curious. That's part number one. Part number two is related to what we call reflection. Now, um, sometimes when you think about young people, parents and adults, we have this like absolutely inappropriate belief that our kids, their minds are empty. Okay. And we're going to like open up their brain and we're going to just like fill it with information. All right. It's not the way learning works, especially not for nine to 14 year olds. No. For this age group, what is required is reflection. Reflection means what? That means connecting new information with existing knowledge. If we can connect existing information or new information with existing knowledge, that is when learning happens. So, for example, if I tell my students, look, something that you know, existing knowledge, let me tell you about some instruction manuals. Every in invention in the world has an instruction manual. You know this. I know this. All of our young adults know this. Even the Segway. You know what the Segway is. I know what a Segway is. All of the young adults know what a Segway is. It is the worst invention in the history of inventions. Time Magazine, looking at the last hundred years of inventions, concluded that the Segway is the most worthless invention in the history of inventions. But even the Segway, has a 184-page instruction manual. So now connecting with new information. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an instruction manual? Absolutely. That instruction manual is the Quran. And by the way, if you and I are living for the very first time with Yes, we are. We've none, none of us ever lived before. It's our first time. We have one shot at life. If we want to live our best life, we must read the instruction manual so that way we can make the most out of our existence. Do you see what reflection is? Like that example that I just gave, connecting existing knowledge with new information. That's what it looks like. And the final piece, I know I'm talking a lot. I get excited about this. But the final piece in this area of secular education that that helped contribute to how we teach is what we call um judgment the judgment is saying okay so what now that i've learned this information how do i change my life because of it because at the end of the day say for example our children learn about the quran theoretically understand how the quran is a miracle theoretically understand how it is an instruction manual at the end of the day there is a judgment element a last piece to say so what what am i going to do with this information how am i going to incorporate this into my life every single day and change my life with it and mashallah through this class and all of the classes that we teach through ilmspring um this is how we teach. And I think that's what makes it unique. I mean, look, there's other things that make it unique too. Mm -hmm. And if you ask me about that, I can tell you about it. <laughs> but um, this is uh, this is certainly one of the things that makes it unique. Awesome, Saz. I love that, brother. I mean, especially, honestly, kind of like using the teaching tools that kids uh, connect with and get excited about being and you know, feel like that level of engagement that they need for that, for that stage of their lives. That's amazing. Now, 
we did, you mentioned this class because again, I meant I, I was saying earlier as well. This is the third time that we're launching at Hamza class with Film Spring. The first was our super successful, super overwhelmingly well received Secrets of Salah class that we did twice because we couldn't get enough people fit into the first class and people wanted it at Hamza so much. Now this is the first time we're launching the Book of Wonders. What is special about this? What is this class about? What is it covering? Tell us more, inshallah. <sighs> So look, Sister Hafsa, um, when I was young, I remember having a conversation with my dad. He was telling me about the story of Prophet Musa salam, and how he had split the Red Sea. And I said, Dad, how come we don't see miracles anymore? And my dad scratched his head and he pointed to our bookshelf and he said, we do see miracles. We have the Quran, the Quran's a miracle. And I looked at my dad and I said, no, but dad, I want to see a real miracle. Now here's the thing, Hafsa. What I know today that I didn't know now, that I didn't know then, is that the Quran is a miracle, a living miracle in our midst. It is sitting on our bookshelf. But if we don't see it as a miracle, the issue is not with the Quran. The issue is with us. The issue is with our understanding of the Quran. Now look, look, Hafsa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator. I think we all agree on that. Let's let's for a moment assume that we all believe this, okay? And we believe that Allah, the one who created the heavens and the earth and everything in between, Allah, the one who created the stars and the solar system and the entire galaxy, Allah, the one who created the ants and the atoms and the cells and, and 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 the water system and Allah the one who created you and me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us with one medium one medium through which we can literally Listen to and understand the words of our Creator. Yet, how many of us, truly, how many of us have a relationship with the Qur'an? And <laughs> it's interesting because we talk about 9 to 14 year olds, but don't even think about 9 to 14, think about us as parents. How many of us have a hollow, a shallow relationship with the Qur'an? This, the literal words of our Creator available for us to read, to reflect, to understand, to contemplate, to change our lives. Yet, we don't have a relationship. So, through the Book of Wonders, our goal is simple. We want to, over five weeks, fundamentally change the relationship that young Muslims have with the Qur'an. One that is filled with love and excitement and adoration and appreciation. You know, Hafsa, I think this is something that many people can relate to. Um, when I was young, um, when we would have dinner parties right on Friday or Saturday nights when my parents would invite other people over and I will have like memorized a surah of the Quran. My dad would invite me in front of like all of the guests and say, Amin, recite surah al Jumu'ah. And I'd be like, okay, bismillah. And I would, re I would recite the surah. And everyone would be smiling ear to ear and they'd be so impressed. And I would feel good. But can I tell you the issue, Hafsa? Yeah, of course. That was it. <laughs> that was my entire relationship with the Quran. I grew up thinking, I basically grew up thinking that like this is a book that if I read, my parents are going to be happy and it's going to earn the approval of other people. That's it. 
that's 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 as far as my relationship went. And so when I got older and I started to like deprioritize the Quran and focus on other things, like you can't blame the kid. The kid never understood. They never, no one ever communicated how valuable the Quran is, how transformational it is, how its words are a healing for our hearts, how it actually is a manual for us that if we choose to live our life according to, we'll earn success in this world and in the hereafter. And so, I mean, it, it's kind of funny because, I mean, it's not funny, but it's ironic. Um, and it's something that I, I truly encourage. You know, for many of us parents who want our kids to have a relationship with the Quran, like, man, I want my kid to have a relationship with the Quran. I want them to like, you know, it's not just about them learning how to read Arabic. It's about them wanting to like, you know, to read this, this, this book, this text. The problem actually is much deeper. It stems with us as parents. Nobody ever communicated to us how transformational the Quran is and how it can fundamentally change our lives. And so just like Secrets of Salah, the first class that we offered through Ilmspring in the Book of Wonders, we highly recommend for families to participate in our courses together. That means on Saturday and Sunday morning, it's not just, you know, the 9, 10, 11, or 12-year-old or 13-year-old, 14 who's, who's watching the course by themselves. No, mom or dad or grandma or grandpa is participating together. And that way, as a family, we're able to, inshallah, grow and um, build a relationship with the Quran together. SubhanAllah. You know, I mean, what you just described, that that experience of, of going up in front of a bunch of family and your only relationship at that age being just to be reciting almost, not, like, not as an entertainment, but as as something <laughs> where that's the main relationship. I think that's so relatable. I think a lot of young Muslim kids went through that very exact same experience. And that's, I mean, it's nice that, Hama, that, that it was a beautiful thing that, that families were proud of their kids reciting Quran. But at the same time, it's like such a superficial kind of relationship. And you're right. It's a shame. SubhanAllah, it's something that the most and one of the most important relationships they're ever going to have in their life, you know, is it starts with that foundation. I think a lot of adults out there, like you were mentioning, also need to rebuild that, which is awesome. Why sometimes I find parents and even myself as someone as my in my 20s, I find more benefit. I'm more engrossed than I can ever imagine being in a course that was built for nine to 14 year olds. But this is essential information. It's packaged in a way that's really focused on the psychology of kids at that age, but it's so connective and it's so essential for everyone. Now, last question. I know uh, you've been, mashallah, wowing us with all your information. I do <laughs> want to say the segue con co comment, Al Maghrib Institute is not responsible and we do not hold those views. <laughs> so newer kids might, but that's one thing where we might have to disagree on. We don't want to get canceled. Uh -oh. uh, in 2022. The, a segue just emailed Al Maghrib. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Cease and desist. Sub cease and desist. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh oh! The lawyers are at the door right Yo, now. Yo, segue! You're so bad. You're the worst. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm mutes, kidding. Mutes, <laughs> mutes everything. Cancels and stream. Anyways, uh, the last thing I do want to ask, and I know I'm sure for those of you who are tuning in who have no idea what's going on, Alhamdulillah, Amagrib and Noor Kids have collaborated once again um, after two amazing collaborations earlier this year on a brand new course called the Book of Wonders uh, and being taught inshallah by brother Amin Asser. It's closing in like less than a week now, mashallah. Um, so if you guys are interested, find out more at the link in the description and make sure you secure your spots because these courses always sell out and then we have a lot of sad people and we don't know what to tell them. Um, so inshallah, brother Amin, I do have one more question. And I do want to ask, what do you, what the kids actually learn? Like this is a five week program. It's split out over the weekends. How is that time going to be spent in the most beneficial way for children? What do they yep. learn? Great, great question. So I want folks to think back to their college classes, right? So when you're in college and you're learning about, say, for example, English, what's going to happen is your course is divided into two parts. There's lecture and then there's discussion. Now for our nine to 14 year olds, we take a very similar approach. We treat them like adults. Um, there is a lecture and then there is discussion, both of which super duper interactive. 
So on Saturdays, we have our lectures where we learn, where we talk about various concepts and we bring them in such a way that uh, I think of I think of each class as a symphony that by the end of the class hits a crescendo and the, and the students learn this magic aha, not literally a magic aha, but like they come away with an aha that inshallah is unforgettable that they will never forget for the rest of their life. Okay, every one of the classes is designed that way. So that's on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we have an interactive discussion where we have um, guest speakers who are some of the most qualified and talented guest speakers in the world who join us, who help take that lesson to the next level and also digest it to say, hey, look, how do we incorporate this into our lives? So when I say that, what do I mean? I mean, like, for example, Imam Mustafa Khattab. Imam Mustafa Khattab is someone who's dedicated his life to the Quran and he's the translator of the clear Quran, which has sold millions of copies around the world. If you go to Quran.com and look for a translation, it is the clear Quran. Well, the actual individual who has translated that, Imam Mustafa Khattab, he is, for example, our first guest speaker who we talk to. And, you know, we discuss on how the Quran has changed his life. And, for example, you know, the, the, the nuances of Arabic versus English and what are the uniquenesses of each of the languages and the texture around that. We talked to uh, other guest speakers like, for example, Ustada Taymiya Zubair, who has spent her entire adult life learning and teaching people the um, contemplation of the Quran. So, you know, one of the things that we talk to our students about is uh, when we read the Quran, we almost draw a metaphor with artwork meaning you reflect on it, you study it, you talk to the artist to understand why did you use these colors? Help me understand the dimensions. In the same way, Ustad Taymiyyah Zubair walks us through how we use hadith to understand the Qur'an. We talk to people like Sheikh Amar al-Shukri, who helps us understand more about the Quran as well. People like uh, Imam Wissam Sharif around the appropriate way to recite the Quran. So anyways, uh, at a high level, that is how our class is broken up. A. B. What are the key lessons that we're teaching? Number one, the question is, um, how can the Quran radically transform our lives. You know, what's the purpose that exists? Number two, is the Quran a miracle? Really? When I say that, I mean genuinely. How can we build an absolute level of conviction that this book is a miracle within our midst? Number three, how should we read the Qur'an? How often should we read it? Like truly, how should we read it as well? This, con this idea of tafakkur and tadabbur, contemplation and reflection. Number four, the Qur'an that we have in front of us, that we have today, how did it actually get here? So understanding the actual way in which the Quran was revealed, compiled, and brought forward in front of us. And finally, this question that many young people and adults wrestle with. Why is it in an Arabic? And do I need to recite it in Arabic? What are the potential drawbacks and limitations of reading it in English? Over these five weeks, we answer these specific questions and along the way help nine to 14 year olds build an unwavering and lifelong relationship with the Quran. Beautifully said, Jazakallah khair brother Amin. Um, I know we don't have too much time left. Uh, if anyone has questions for brother Amin about this amazing experience in the chat, please do feel free to share them. I do wanna shout out, there's been some uh, people coming in at Hamla throughout the session. Just like a look here, if you've come here from the very beginning or if you joined us midway, one of the things that's really awesome about Elm Spring, just like this audience right here, is that there is such a, a diverse international audience. So the kids also get a chance to, I think we were mentioning this earlier, I mean, get a chance to connect with, you know, with, with other Muslims all around the globe and get to see how big the Ummah is and get to feel, there's kids who are like, 
you know, joining us from communities where they're like, there, we don't have any other Muslims here. We didn't know Muslims looked like this. We didn't know there was so many of us, you know. So to feel this feeling of community, of togetherness, of belonging, a lot of times it's hard at that age. And Alhamdulillah, Ilm Spring, one of the things I'm really proud of is that we really facilitate that community and that excitement about the deen and excitement about being Muslim and being part of this ummah. Alhamdulillah. So yeah. that was, that's always memorable. You know, and, and it's 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 um, something to, you know, knowing and experiencing are different, right? Like say, for example, if I described a rose and, you know, the color of it and the shape yeah. of it and the texture of it, and I described it to you. Um, but when you actually smell it, right, it's, it, it is a different experience, right? And by the way, we talk about this related to the Quran. It's one thing to talk about it and theorize about, but then it's another thing to actually read it, experiencing it, taste the sweetness for yourself. But anyways, the reason why I brought this up mm -hmm. is Many of us, of course, are aware of the, mashallah, like expanse of our ummah as Muslims, right? Oh, yeah, you know, we come in all different shapes, colors, and sizes. But when you are together for five weeks with Muslims from Denmark and Nigeria and Utah and even Wisconsin, even Wisconsin, that is when you like experience like wow what a community we're part of and for nine to 14 year olds i think that it's a really unique age where we have the opportunity to um build that feeling of belonging through our classes even was even wisconsin even minnesota even no definitely minnesota? minnesota definitely minnesota what do you mean even no we're lucky to have minnesota I mean, you're neighbors with Wisconsin, so I don't know. No, Wisconsin, I don't know. All right, so Wisconsin man, water trickles to Minnesota. Um, it's so funny. No, we, no, I, I, Midwest is very good. Um, I, 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 I generally, sometimes I have negativity towards Wisconsin because of the Green Bay Packers, but alhamdulillah, the Green Bay Packers are having a terrible season this year, which means, you know, I, there's really no need to, you know, tease them at this point. Don't worry, we are not going to indoctrinate your children with sports uh, affiliations, inshallah. That is the the side conversation that we're having here. But Jazakallah <laughs> khair, brother. I mean, we may or may today. not come out Minnesota Vikings fans. <laughs> I mean, like, I probably should have listed that as number six on like the key. It's like learn about the miraculous uh, nature Allah. and the importance of the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. Incoming refund requests for this upcoming Book of Wonders. Oh, <laughs> Say Allah protect us. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. That's, that's the fun part is that we have a lot of fun. There's a lot of jokes. There's a lot of, Alhamdulillah, realness to the way that we teach and that community that we built through Elm Spring. So I'm really looking forward to you, Amin, joining us, inshallah, again in just about a week, Alhamdulillah, as we kick off our new semester. Just a reminder, everyone, once the semester is closed or it sells out, it's closed. Then we focus all of our attention on the students that are registered to make sure that they have an amazing experience for the next five weeks. So make sure that you do join us now at the Book of Wonders. The link is in your description at ilmspring.com. And we will see you guys on the other side. Jazakallah to those who are mentioning in the chat that you'll be joining us or that you've already registered. Inshallah, we cannot wait to see you guys and your kiddos connect with us as well, inshallah. Any final words before we close off, Amin? Um, I just thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity truly. Um, you know, uh, there is no better deed that one can do than to help teach and build a relationship with the Qur'an. And I uh, just give a lot of thanks to Allah that um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has provided us with the opportunity and honored us with the opportunity to make this available. Um, you know, subhanAllah, over the last two years, many of our worlds have changed. And, you know, when, uh, when, when calamity happens like COVID and when our world is fundamentally turned upside down, we begin to contemplate about, you know, uh, other things as well, right? So sometimes we contemplate about, hey, you know, are we, are we near, you know, the end? And our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be on him, when he talked to his companions about the signs of the last days, 
among them was actually a discussion on the Quran. One where he tells his companions that towards the end, people will not have a relationship with the Quran. And subhanAllah, when we genuinely like think about this, if, if we believe that Allah created everything, and Allah provided us with his actual words of guidance to us. How crazy would we be not to obsess over it, to internalize it, to read it every day, to think about how we can bring it into our lives. This is the words of our creator. Yet, in 2022, how many of us truly can say that we do that? And so, inshallah, through this book, the book of or through this online course, the Book of Wonders, we hope and I believe that for our students who enroll, we will be able to, inshallah, build a lifelong relationship with the Quran such that we and our children are not among those people. Inshallah, may Allah facilitate it and make it easy. We cannot wait to begin that journey with you, Amin, and the amazing group of students we look forward to meeting, inshallah, in just about a week. For those of you who want to be part of that journey, jump on the train and go to ilmspring.com to join us and make this a pivotal moment in your child's life and your family as well. Jazakallah for being with us, everyone who is here throughout and those of you who are watching the recording. If you have any questions, feel free to go to that link and message us in the chat there or email us as well and we'll be, we'll be responding to you in the next uh, 24 hours, inshallah. Jazakallah once again. We will see you guys online soon. For now, take care. Assalamualaikum.